where do you get into philosophically between uh, external support via an orthotic versus strengthening the intrinsic via training methods and, and, and a different process, but uh, one could easily argue a more important process. I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope we go into this. <laughs> so yes. So the way that I'll break it down, and you can kind of think of it almost like a flow chart, is that first I'm differentiating, are they flexible or rigid, or are they this kind of outlier pancake foot, which is rigid anyway. So it's on the rigid side. Um, if they have the flexible flat foot or overpronation, then I further classify and I say, is this more of a matter of foot weakness mm -hmm. or do they have ligament laxity and a hypermobile foot? Because there's two different causes to that then, right? If they have, and then under that is then mild, moderate, severe, we'll just say. And there's a spectrum of that. Typically, a mild, flexible, overpronated foot is not ligament lax or hypermobile. They respond very well to strengthening the foot <laughs> and the core and the glutes. Sorry, cannot forget up higher. Absolutely. Yeah. And the core and the glutes. On then the moderate, it, it, it really is on which side. So let's say we have a moderate um, patient over pronation that's flexible and they're on either side of that. I then go into what is their injury history and what are the demands that they're putting on their foot. If they're a runner and they have a history of plantar fasciitis when they run, as an example, then I may have them use an orthotic just when they run. And it'll be a very specific orthotic for running, not walking and running orthotics. Are, are actually different. The shell is to be different. And that's also really important for the patient and the, the user to understand. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, uh, can you just explain what the shell is? Yes. So I, oh, I don't have an orthotic. Normally I have everything sitting on my chair. Um, the shell would be the back part of the orthotic. Okay. So this part. And it's the, the hard plastic. Okay piece with the arch built into it. Um, and that's actually the part of the orthotic that controls the foot mm -hmm. in a sense. Okay. Now all shells of orthotics have a certain stiffness to them. Not all orthotics are, they're not hard plastic, right? A lot are. And that's what the consumer or the patient, like the lay person thinks and associates with orthotics is a very hard plastic shell pushing into their foot. Okay. That's not the case. The prescriber has the ability to create flex. So I, I can dial in the flexibility of that shell or how high or low I want the arch of the shell. That's the, the art of orthotics is actually really complex mm -hmm. to, to really be good at them. So a running orthotic should be more flexible than a walking orthotic because of arch compression and how you load elastic energy when you run. So it's like the spring theory, right? Is that we're rubber bands and you have to load your rubber band by compressing your arch. That's running. Um, walking is different. So depending if you're on that moderate, let's say you don't do that. You're a mom of three and you just want to control your feet so that when you're with your kids and all that stuff, you don't have foot pain. Then I would probably say, let's just strengthen your feet, right? The load and the demands and the, the rate of force coming through your foot isn't as high as, you know, someone who is a runner. So let's just focus on foot strengthening and we're there. Over on the severe side, obviously they're going into orthotics, depending how aggressive, right? I can actually make quite aggressive orthotics that are uh, responded quite well to, so not in a negative way, but everyone is still doing strengthening and sensory stimulation of their feet. What I do want to add real quick is there is some research, because I know you love research, <laughs> there is research demonstrating that the average correction of six weeks of glute strengthening, this is just glute strengthening, on foot pronation is approximately two to three degrees, which is the average post or correction of an orthotic. Whoa. So, Whoa. Wait, how, yeah. how many weeks of glute strengthening? Six weeks. Six weeks of glute strengthening can equal the average orthotic that's created in terms of its effect on the arch of the, or the angle of the, the, 
the posterior arch of the foot. Yep. So if I'm going, if I'm going to, and you're like, I need that study. I love <laughs> it. Yes, for study. sure. I definitely yes. want. Yes. So if I'm going to do an orthotic that has an average mild correction, like a two to three degree post, and I'm sorry if the listeners don't understand, but just say like the, the average correction orthotic does, okay. if that's the case, I'm going to start with glute strengthening, foot strengthening, all of that. So maybe the patient doesn't need the orthotic. If you enjoyed this short clip, you've got to see the full interview with Dr. Emily Splickle. It is jam packed with information. I'm going to put a card for that here and a link in the description down below. But before you click over, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you're updated on the new videos that come out every single week. That's all for now. See you next time.